I got so much to talk about. I got pages and pages of notes we're going to go through today. I've been teaching this stuff for 27 years. The reason I love teaching about money is not so much, believe it or not, because I, I want you to have a certain amount of money. It's not so much the money as what the money can do for you. And, and here's what I believe about personal finance. I believe that when you fix your finances, you free yourself to live your best life. And I believe that when you fix your finances, you free your soul to fly. Learning about money can be simple, it can be easy, it can be fun, and the most important thing, it can be actionable. Let's control the controllables. So you wanna build wealth, we gotta control the controllables. And I'm gonna take you on the journey a little bit, not all of it, but I'm going to take you on the journey that is inside this book, The Automatic Millionaire. I'm going to walk you through this concept of how to build wealth by paying yourself first automatically. Super simple, but life-changing. So I'm going to share the five questions with you because then you can ask them to yourself and then ultimately you can, teach, you can ask this of other people. These are the questions that will determine if you'll build financial security. Question number one, do you want to be rich? Yes? How many of you would just like to be out of debt? Does anybody want to admit to that? Like, I just want to be out of debt. Okay. How many of you are like, I don't need to be rich. I just want to be financially secure. You see, if you just want to be financially secure, right? So here's the question behind this question. Why do you want what you want? I learned young that for most people, Money is not enough to actually motivate them to do all the work that needs to be done to become wealthy. There's all kinds of obstacles that will come in your way to building wealth. You can't get rich in days. It takes decades typically. But when you are clear on what's most important to you and it's based on your values, when you answer the question for yourself, I want to be financially secure because of, and it's a value answer. I want to protect my family. I want to pass a legacy to my children. I want to give back to my church. I want to be able to give back to my community. When you can answer the question with your core values, you will then become an unstoppable force because your values will pull you through the difficult times to achieve your goals. One of the biggest reasons people fail financially is the way they spend their money is actually in conflict with their values. When your values are clear, your financial decisions become easier. This takes me to question number two. And question number two is this, do you pay yourself first? When you pay yourself first, what you show yourself every day is that you're putting yourself first. How much to pay yourself first? One hour a day of your income minimum. So whatever you're earning, that first hour a day from nine to 10, that's gotta come off the top and go into a retirement account. Now in the United States, that would be an IRA account or that would be a 401k plan. If you're self-employed, it would be a SEP self-employed retirement account. Now, again, I can't go through every single country, but like in Canada, it'd be like an RSP account. So you, you got to do your own research on what account it is. But the most important thing is the math. One hour a day of your income is 12.5% of your gross income. Now, I will tell you this, that's a minimum number that you should save. That's not a maximum number. It's a minimum number. Your goal should be minimum one hour a day of your income. For... For those of you who are self-employed, it should be minimum. Your, your goal should be 15% or more of your income going to you automatically for yourself. This is what's going to give you financial confidence, knowing that you're taking your income and putting it away for yourself for the future. Why don't people do this? Do you want to be rich? Do you pay yourself first? The third thing was this. Do you save one hour a day of your income? which takes me to question number four. And that is, do you save money 
automatically. How does the average American build wealth on an ordinary income? They save money automatically. I started my career at Morgan Stanley. I was there for nine years as a financial advisor. It used to be complicated to save money automatically. Like if you came to my office, they were called systematic investment plans. And the paperwork was like seven pages long. But we would encourage all of our clients, anybody who came to my seminars, even if you're just saving $50 a month, we would encourage our clients to save automatically. And the reason was what we saw firsthand is that no one would save for more than two to three months unless it was automatic. People would say, oh, no, no, I'm super disciplined. I don't need to do it this way. People used to be afraid to have money taken from their paychecks and invested automatically. That's really not the case anymore. But people were afraid to do this, this movement of their money automatically. But the problem is people wouldn't save unless it was automated. So many Americans, and this is also true all over the world, so many people have built wealth because they just set something up once, forgot about it, left it alone, and next thing you know, 20 years go by, 25 years go by, 30 years go by, and they've built massive wealth because the savings was automatic. The key is automation. The key is no budget. Budgeting takes time. Budgeting creates fights. Budgeting is boring. Automation is beautiful. Which takes me to question number five. Do you know what your latte factor is? People always say to themselves and to me, I don't have the money to save automatically. I can't do that. And so I started showing people, you know what, small amounts of money, $5 a day, $10 a day could change your life. And it can, by the way, can completely change your life. You got to start somewhere. But if you don't believe you have the money and you tell yourself that, you'll never save. So the thing about $5 a day is you start saving in your 20s, you can have a million dollars by the time you reach retirement. Now, it's not enough. $5 a day now is not enough. You need to save more than that. But you need to figure out what your latte factor is. And you know, nobody's probably going to Starbucks right now. You're making coffee at home. Oh my God, and guess what? You survived. People would say to me, I cannot give up my coffee. There's no way. And somehow we've all survived making coffee at home for a year. Some of you here have a lot more money than you actually had a year ago because you're not spending anything, right? You're not eating out. You're not going out for coffee. Our expenses have been reduced. When we start to go back to a new normal, the question becomes, do you keep some of these good habits or do you just go out and spend money again? Now, you know, one of the reasons the market's up so much is because we're expecting everybody to rush out and spend a ton of money and everybody ready to party. I wanna show you something based on this idea of partying. What do you think it costs to blow $10,000 a year? It's $27.40 a day. What it takes to blow $10,000 in a year is $27.40 a day, which is less than most people make an hour. $27.40 a day in the US, and you can blow that so easily, right? That's $10,000 in a year. For many of you, that would build your emergency account. That would start your retirement account. What happens if you took that money and you invested? I know it's a lot of money, $27 a day, but what would happen in 20 years? If you were in the S&P 500 fund and the market did what it's done the last 30 years, you'd have $572,000. What if it went out 30 years? $27.40 a day. You'd have $1,644,000 in 30 years. What if I went out 40 years? This is where the numbers go crazy. You'd have $4,424,000 potentially. By the way, did you just see that astronomical growth? Because it, sometimes if you don't really know compound interest, this is the miracle of compound interest. This is the part that blows the mind away. How can this go from $572,000 and in 10 years be worth three times more and in 20 years be worth almost 10 times more? That's because money's making money. And that's the whole key. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.